We're going to start looking at postmodern architecture through the lens of skyscraper design. There are going to be a few key changes that are going to take place during this period that give us the modern skyscraper of today. Now, the biggest change that we're going to see is called framed tube construction. And what I'm dealing with here with framed tube construction is the idea that just like the international style, we have a core. This is usually where the staircases, the elevators, maintenance exists in the center of that building. But international style, this would all be cantilevered off and there would be a facade here that's non-structural. When we get to frame tube construction, these elements on the facade will now be structural. So basically what you have is you're framing in using the exterior facade to frame in the smaller central tube where all of our elevators, etc., exist. So that's why it's called framed tube. So one exists within the other. And this is a fairly common form today. So again, here's another illustration to try and get it across. Here's our central core. Here's our floors going across. And then you have the framing on the outside, that use of structural steel now on the outside. What this allows for is additional speed in construction because all of these steel elements can of course be made in a factory and put up very, very quickly. It creates a floor plan that can be subdivided uh, as needed and it creates a stronger structure where the engineering doesn't have to be quite as accurate as you needed in the international with the cantilever. Now, adding to this, we will get what's called truss tube, the John Hancock in Chicago being a, bet, a great example. So here we can see that exterior framing, those massive structural elements, but then there's trussing running diagonally across the building. Now that trussing stands out as an artistic element, creating a beautiful facade, an element of aesthetic, which we are used to seeing from the postmodern. That truss tube basically prevents it from twisting very much in the wind. It creates a very strong structure and it's going to be key to some of these massive skyscrapers that we're going to see after 1960. We will also see bundled tube. And what this is, is imagine here's the Sears Tower in Chicago. Imagine the Sears Tower as a series at the base of nine of these tubed frame pieces. So each one of these is its own independent tubed frame or frame tube. And what they're going to do is they're going to bundle them. So as we move up, they act as a group. So each one of these would be an independent. Here's my little core. Here's my framing on the exterior. But by bundling them, I can now create something even bigger, even more impressive, and create an interesting shape. If the Willis Tower were just a giant rectangle, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting as it is today. And it is said, and this is allegorical more than anything else, or not allegorical, this is a story more than anything else, anecdotal, that's what I'm looking for. But it looks like an old fashioned soft pack of cigarettes that you dropped and some of the cigarettes pulled out at different heights. And it's said that that's where the architect got the idea for these different levels that we see throughout the Sears Tower. Now this allows for structures like the Burj Dubai. And this is, of course, the largest tower in the world. But we can again see that bundled tube construction. Here's one of our tubes. Here's another tube. Here's another tube. And you can see them in the architecture. And then we have these bands running across, almost reminding us of these tubes being tied together, almost like the tied reeds that we occasionally see from ancient Egypt. So let's compare the international and the postmodern just to clarify some of these points. <clears throat> in the international, we have a core, of course, in the center of the building, but I'm drawing it on the outside here, and they cantilever the floors out. All of these steel elements that you see on the exterior are just a facade. It's basically a big wall of glass. It has no structural 
sense to it whatsoever. If you were to hit one of these, knock one of these walls out, the building still stands. Whereas when we get to postmodern, we have that frame tube construction. So in the middle of the Hancock Tower, you have your elevators and then you have your framing on the outside. And we have a more sculptural element. They're bringing a sense of beauty into the structure here using, for example, the truss tube that they just leave open to the outside. Also, the shape of the building. You'll notice it's not just a rectangle. It kind of sweeps up to a narrower top, reminiscent of pyramids, obelisks, any kind of tall, ancient structure, bringing in that classical element that we talked about in postmodern architecture. 